Hello guys. So I'll continue making my immersive camera tutorials and for today I've decided to kind of imitate the Ishai lens effect. And why do I say imitate? Because inside Unreal, uh, even if we use the same camera, we can't produce the proper lens distortion to have the fisheye. So to make this feature happen, we need to have uh, or we need to use one new trick that I found on the Epix uh, website and this one is called Panini Projection. So you may find it yourself and as for my side I'm gonna explain how it works and what edge cases it has. Probably most of you know uh, what or how the fisheye effect looks but to summarize it's the ultra wide lens uh, which emphasizes its focus at the object in the center of it and has a big amount of distortion on the radial fall off. And it's commonly used for uh, photography or even movies, uh, especially for the extreme sports like skateboarding or rollerblading and so on. I also know that this kind of effect is used for this bright plate that is used for security inside the malls or supermarkets to have the better view of overall scene and so on. As I said, we don't really care about camera setup because uh, Panini projection that is used inside Unreal is kind of post process that is applied over the final scene. We only need to care about the final look of our fisheye lens. Obviously we are not in 19th and we all have wide or ultra wide screen because we're gonna make the game. Obviously, we don't need to have these uh, like circular black lines. So we need to go for the full frame or diagonal uh, fisheye lens, which is look like this. So it's kind of the cropped image from the bigger one that we have. To have Panini projection work uh, for us as the fisheye lens, effect, we need to have only two nodes, get player controller, so with this one we may execute the console command, and this one is the second. The command itself is rather simple, upscale panini d, and there we need to provide the number, which evaluates from 0 to wherever you like. This number uh, is highly dependent on the field of view of camera that we have at the moment. Uh, I'm gonna launch the game, but the execute console command will be unplugged and this command uh, I will uh, call through the console inside the game so you may see the results with and without the process applied. So as you may see right now, we don't have any distortion but once I set the panini D to be 1, we have it. And the higher number we uh, set, the more distortion we receive. But as you see, uh, effect is uh, not linear, it's rather uh, exponential, so even with the high number we won't receive any ugly artifacts. Well, as I said, this one is uh, highly dependent on the field of view, so let's say it to be 135, and also I'll change the camera boom to something smaller, so the object inside our scene will be closer to the camera. So now as you can see we have this kind of distortion but then say when you need it to be one we have our Ishai lens effect which looks uh, more radial uh, rather than it was at the 19 degrees and let's say when you need it to be eight you may see we appear closer to our camera the effect is much more better, but uh, the overall uh, image looks uh, a little bit blurry and unsharped. That's because, as I said, Panini projection is the post process which is applied uh, inside upscaling uh, pass. So we need to adjust uh, one more uh, thing so the image will look uh, better. So, guys, I also made two screenshots. Here on the right is 90 degrees 4 with the Panini D set to 4 
and on the left is the same Panini DS4 but off is 135. So you may see that on the right we have better result uh, in uh, like the sharpness and uh, on our left we have the more blurred one and unsharped but the overall distortion on the left is higher than we have on our right. We back to our editor. The Panini D is set to be 8. Our gameplay camera focus 135. We launch the game and we see that we have this fisheye effect. Pretty much nice looking angles. Good distortion, but overall image looks out of focus. And here is this ugly edge case. In case you want to have extreme field of view values and use this Panini projection trick to get this fisheye lens effect, you should get rid of temporal anti-aliasing or TSR and use FXAA instead. TSR and TAA are executed at the same pass on the upscaling where the Panini projection is also calculated. So, we need to get FXAA and we need to increase the overall uh, percentage rate of the pixels on our viewport. Once we got this one, if you launch the game, now you may see that we have the same effect of the fisheye, but overall image looks sharper. How to increase the screen percentage? We need to, first of all, cause we launch our game inside the Pi client, execute this command before we get screen percentage increase. Editor viewport overwrite by screen percentage zero. This one is needed to get rid of a kind of hard coded value, which prevents us from leaking off the video RAM. In case you want to get this uh, good looking results with uh, kind of high values of POV and Panini D projection and so on, and you know what you do, you need to get this screen percentage rate increased, but it will uh, drastically uh, change the performance of your project. So, also these comments are executed properly inside the packaged game, so don't worry, but they are applied over the role uh, like editor scene. So once you execute it inside the gameplay, once the end game uh, finishes, you need to restore the default values. So on the end play, I set Panini D to zero, viewport by screen percentage one and screen percentage back to 100. Because if I don't do this one, let me show you what will it be. I press compile, I go to my viewport, you see the scene. I press it right now, I accept, sorry, I'm escape, and you may see that we have changes applied over our viewports and we don't need to have them. The last thing here is to talk about the Panini S attribute, but in terms of uh, fisheye lens effect, we can simply withdraw this one and uh, set it to zero all the time. And this attribute was used for Unreal Tournament to get rid of the fisheye lens distortion on the radio falloff for people who played on the high values of field of view to get the broader uh, scene. And uh, let me show how it looks with the field of view 135 and the Panini S to be zero. We have a kind of radial falloff distortion on our uh, edges from the left and right. But once we increase it to 0 0.25, you may see that it unwraps this uh, fisheye effect. Uh, if we go with the negative values, it will actually increase the fisheye effect and add this kind of circular uh, black line. So minus 0 0.25, something like this. So, also, this one will all only work if the Panini D is higher than zero. I highly recommend you to get rid of the idea 
to have extreme values of POV or like extremely looking uh, fisheye lens effect. So you can combine this one with some restrictions, but it will work with all the features that I cover previous months. Here I have my graph with a uh, slight representation of my previous work. So I have the post process with the changes to the f-stop and the sensor width. So I have the blur bokeh effect. And on the tick event I have kind of auto tracking system to get my object always in the focus. My camera boom is set to minus 30 on the Y rotation angle and the follow camera is 110 degrees. Uh, it's the field of view. The values for my Panini D might be changed from 1 to 4, they are good results. And 0 back at the end plate to get rid of the effect uh, from my viewport. So if I launch the game, you may see that I have lens distortion, object in the focus, I have depth of field, so objects uh, that are on the far plane appear blurred, but once I uh, move towards them, they appear in the focus. And you may collapse this one to the function and use uh, for any of my previous tutorials to build your camera system. And uh, one more case, how it might be used, it's sort of like you make the skateboarding game. So follow camera 40 as the offset on the Y axis. So it's from the shoulders, uh, like shot from the shoulder. Camera boom is minus 10 on the Z axis and 10 degrees on the Y rotation. And that's how it looks. So assume that you are riding your skateboards and you have all those cinematic features work fine. Pretty nice looking effect. Bokeh and so on and so on. So guys, thank you for your time that you spent on me and my tutorial. I hope you like it and uh, as always, subscribe to my channel, leave your feedback, press like button. And uh, in case you want to support me, I have the Patreon page link is uh, under the description to this video so follow up and I'm really grateful for all my patrons that uh, help me financially especially at this time so see you soon guys